Okay, today we're going to talk about some stuff that's involved in hardware engineering. A lot of what we do um, is thought of as more software engineering, okay, but this stuff is going to be hardware based. So I'm going to draw some electrical circuits here, and you're probably familiar with these symbols, but let me just put them down anyways to make sure everybody's on board. Okay, so for a switch, an electrical switch can have two states, opened or closed. So an open electrical switch will look like this. That means turned off. That's what open means. Okay, that's an open switch. You see it's literally open. There's an opening there. And it, that means it's turned off because the electricity cannot flow through there. Because there's a break in the wiring. Okay, and a closed switch will be drawn like this. That represents the switch is being is turned on because the electricity can flow. Okay. All right. <clears throat> then a battery will be drawn this way. That's a battery. And a light bulb will be drawn like this. Okay, so let me draw two very simple circuits that have a battery, a light bulb, and two switches. Okay, one is called in series and the other is called in parallel okay so let's write this down two switches in series okay so that would look like this we've got a battery here okay and then the wiring comes up here and then we have one switch And then there's going to be another one following it. And these switches can be opened or closed. I'm going to draw them as being open. But they can certainly be closed. Okay, and then we have a light bulb. And then that's it. Wiring goes back to the battery. Okay. Let's label these switches as P and Q. Okay? All right. Another way of putting a circuit with two switches is to do what's called putting the switches in parallel. And then, instead of the switches following one after the other, what we have is the wiring actually branches apart, and the electricity can, th can flow through one switch or the other.
and then comes back together. Okay, let's label those P and Q again. I want to label them in black though. This is switch P and this is switch Q. Okay, now let's write down a table that will show if the light bulb is on or off based upon the switches P and Q being opened or closed. Okay, so let's do that. So we have switch P and switch Q. Okay, and then we have the light bulb. I'm just going to write bulb. So, what are the possibilities for P and Q? They can each be opened or closed, right? So we could have P closed, Q open. Actually, I'm sorry, that we could have that certainly, but that's not the one I wanted to write first. Let's write P closed and Q closed. And you'll see why very, very soon, why I would like to do it in this order. We could have P closed and Q open. P open. Q closed. P open and Q open. Okay, so let's look at these different possibilities and I'll actually draw them in the picture. So there's the first possibility. P is closed, whoops, and this one I should do, and Q is closed. Will the light bulb be on or off? Well, the electricity can flow through there very perfectly, right? So in that case, the light bulb would be on. Okay. Next option is P is closed, but Q is open. Then the electricity will not flow and the light bulb will be off. Okay, here's a picture of P open, Q closed. Will the electricity flow? No, it won't, will it? So the bulb will be off. And then, of course, if both switches are open, then the electricity will not flow and the bulb will be off. Okay, so that's fine. You might recognize something there, but for right now, let's just leave that. Let's do the same thing for the parallel switches. Okay, so let's draw both switches closed. Will the electricity flow through the light bulb? It will, correct? There's actually plenty of options for the electricity to flow. And the light bulb will be on. Now what if I leave P closed and I open Q? The electricity will still flow, won't it? It won't flow through Q, but it can still flow through P and work its way from the battery through the light bulb back to the battery. And so the light bulb will be on. Same idea if I open P and close Q, same idea. Now if they're both open, then in this case, that's the only way to break the flow of electricity. In that case, the light bulb would be off. Now, what I want you to get from this is I hope you see a connection between this and stuff that we've already done. 
what if What if I drew um, this table? Let's see if you remember this. I'm leaving this up here blank for on purpose for a little bit, okay? But look at that truth table. Compare this truth table with this circuit table. Don't you see that they're the same thing except instead of closed and open, on and off? Remember, by the way, that closed, a closed switch is what we usually call on. When you say, <clears throat> I'm going to turn on the light switch, what that means is you're going to close the switch. So on all of these, instead of closed and open, let's use words on and off. Okay, isn't this table identical to this one, except instead of the word on, we have the word true, and the word off is false. Do you see that? Switching on and off with true and false, they're actually the same table, aren't they? And what is that truth table from? You should actually recognize that. Isn't that the truth table for the conjunction P and Q? It is. So this electrical circuit actually represents the idea P and Q. A logical idea being represented by a physical circuit. That's actually really important. That means that there's a reason to learn logic if you want to construct computers or any kind of electrical mechanism. Okay? Because the circuits are really just logical constructions. And it's no different for the second one. Let's change closed and open to the words on and off. And then you'll recognize that that's the same as this truth table. Those are the same truth tables. One using the words on and off, and the other one using the words true and false. What is that a truth table for? What statement form? You should recognize that that's the truth table for the disjunction P or Q. So that's very important to come up upon the realization that electrical circuits and logic are actually one and the same. And in fact, that's why certain kinds of circuits are called logic boards. Okay? Now,
Let's run with that idea. But before we go any further, let's throw out some new words here. Okay, so here's, I would like you to know these words. Any variable that can take on one of two values is called a Boolean variable named after an English mathematician, George Boole, who lived in the 1800s. Okay? So in the electrical circuits, P and Q are Boolean variables because they can take on one of the two values on or off. In logic, P and Q are Boolean variables because they can take on one or two values, one of two values, true or false. Okay? On or off, true or false, there's two possible values, so they're called Boolean variables. Okay? And an expression made up of Boolean variables is called a Boolean expression. So things like P and Q or P or Q, those are Boolean expressions. Okay? Now oftentimes in hardware engineering, Instead of on and off, we use the numbers 0 and 1. 0 represents off, and 1 represents on. So those tables up there would normally be drawn like this. For the first row, instead of writing on, 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 you would see 1, 1, 1. And the second row would be on, off, off, and then off, on, off, and then off, off, off. That's how it would usually be. It's just a lot easier and a lot faster than writing on and off. Okay, so let me change those tables. Okay, now the numbers 0 and 1, you might know this, those form the uh, binary numbers. And each number, 0 and 1, are called binary digits. And abbreviation for binary digit is bit. So 0 and 1 are called bits. Okay? All right, now, what have we talked about? We said that electrical circuits and logic are essentially one and the same thing. Okay? So, we should be able to represent logical constructs using electrical circuits. What are some of the logical connectives that we've learned? We've learned negation, which is not. We've learned conjunction, which is and. And we've learned disjunction, which is or. Okay, I want to show you how to represent each of those things in a logical circuit, okay? When we build them into a logical circuit, they're called gates, 
Okay. All right, so let's write this down. Let's call this section gates in an, well, I was going to say in an electrical circuit, but I think I would prefer to say in a logical circuit. Okay. So we have a not gate an AND gate, and an OR gate. Okay, a NOT gate looks like this. We're going to represent that with a triangle. I did not need to make the lines quite that thick, but that's okay. All right, I'm going to write the word not in here. It looks like that, okay? A triangle with a little circle at the tip. Okay, now you have P is the variable coming into the circuit. Whoops. That signal can be turned on or off. Okay. Then it goes through the NOT gate. A signal comes out. It can be turned on or off, meaning there will be a signal or there won't be. Okay. And the NOT gate is also called an inverter. It inverts the signal. So in other words, if the signal coming into the gate is on, then the signal going out of the gate will be off. And if the signal going in is off, then the signal coming out will be on. Okay? So we draw what's called an input-output table. And in a circuit, there can be several inputs and several outputs. But for this one gate, there's only one input and one output. The input signal is P. The output signal is R. If P is on, R is off. And if P is off, R is on. That's called the input-output table for that gate. Okay? All right, then we have what's called an AND gate. And we're going to draw those like this. An AND gate has two signals input into it. These black arrows I'm drawing there as extra. They're normally not drawn. I'm just trying to indicate that they're going into the gate. Okay. And it has one signal coming out of the gate. So let's call the two input signals P and Q, and we'll call the output signal R. Okay, let's draw the input-output table for this kind of a gate. Okay. So we have this time two inputs. 
and one output. The inputs are P and Q. The output is R. Here's the possible combinations. On, 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 off, off, on, off, off, and if P and Q signals are both on, then R signal will be on. If either of P and Q are off, then R will be off. So I want you to notice that the NOT gate is the electrical version of negation. And the AND gate is the electrical version of a conjunction. Which we saw, by the way, up above, that's the same thing. Like, if you were wanting to physically build an AND gate, how could you physically build an AND gate? We saw it up above by putting two switches in series. That's the same thing as AND. Okay. All right. And there's one more type of gate that I want to do right now. We'll get to others later, but right now let's just do this one. And that's an OR gate. Okay, we're going to draw them like this. I'm not very good at drawing these. There we go, that's pretty good. Okay, very similar to an AND gate. An OR gate has two input signals and one output signal. So let's call the inputs P and Q and the output R. And let's draw the input output table. You probably already can guess what it's going to look like. So we have two inputs, P and Q, one output, R. And it goes like this. If either P or Q signal is on, then R will be on. If both P and Q signals are off, then R will be off. And that is exactly the same idea as a disjunction. Okay. Now, you can put lots of these gates together to build more complicated circuits. There's a few rules to follow. These are going to be called combinational circuits. And there's a few rules that you follow when doing this. So let me write these rules down. So the idea behind a combinational circuit is that we want it so that the output at any time is determined entirely by its input at that time without regard to previous inputs. Okay, I'm going to write that down. We want the output at any time to be determined solely 
by the inputs at that time. without regard to previous inputs. And in order for that to happen, we have to follow a few rules, okay? Number one. Input wires are never combined. Number two. Although you can't combine two wires together, you can split one wire into two. I'm going to write it this way. A single input wire can be split and fed into multiple gates. Number three, a wire that comes out of one gate can go into another gate. So an output wire can be used as an input wire. But not to itself. You can't have an output wire feed back into the gate that it came out of. Even after passing through other gates. Okay, so no output wire can eventually feed back into the same gate. Okay, those are the four rules we have to follow for these things called com combinational circuits. So I'll draw you a few examples, or maybe just one, depending upon how much time I take up on it. Okay, look at that circuit right there. It's got signals P and Q coming in. Okay, now this is a branching here when you see that dot, and when you draw these, you need to draw that dot if a wire branches off. So the wire P is splitting and going into two different paths. You must draw that dot because if you don't, if I just drew it like this, and then that's crossing the wire Q, like it is here, then look, how do I know which is the place that that is branching off of and which is it just crossing over? I would not know. So you must, when you draw these yourself, you must draw some sort of a dot like that showing that it's branching off and then if there is no dot like that I know it's just crossing over okay all right so I want to come up with a boolean expression for that circuit so how are we going to do that here's how you do it okay so you have signal traveling through P and Q into this gate here. 
and it's an OR gate. So what signal is going to be coming out of that is going to be the signal P or Q. So let's write that down here to keep track of it. Then the signal P or Q is traveling along that wire. Okay. Let's go down and look at this gate. You have P and Q feeding into that gate and it's an AND gate. So the signal coming out is going to be the signal P and Q. And then that goes through a NOT gate. So what's going to come out of that is going to come NOT P and Q. Okay, and then the signals P or Q and NOT P and Q both go through the AND gate and come out as what? P or Q and NOT P and Q. And there you go. This is the Boolean expression for that circuit. Okay? So that's pretty easy to write the Boolean expression for a circuit. <clears throat> What's a little bit harder, I think, not terribly, but I think requires a little bit more thought, is um, to create a circuit for a Boolean expression. So the same idea as this, except in the other direction. Okay, let me look at the time here. Okay, it's been 40 minutes. Maybe we should better stop here. And then we'll pick up here on the next lecture.